Good morning, friends. Welcome to Tantu webinar, how 3D can work for your fashion business. This webinar is brought to you by Tantu in collaboration with Tukatek. Tantu is an association of textile and apparel enthusiasts from two of the oldest textile colleges from India, Government College of Engineering and Textile Technology, Sirampur and Bharampur. Tantu was established in 1997 in Delhi and today has more than 200 members spread across the globe. Tantu serves the textile and apparel fraternity by organizing seminars, publishing journals, students' scholarships, to name a few. To know more about Tantu, please visit www.tantutextile.com or just scan the QR code on the right corner of your screen. Our partner Tukatek is an innovative technology company based in Los Angeles, USA, having offices across the world. Tukatek may be credited with many firsts in apparel manufacturing. They are the first to start the software as a service concept in pattern making, the famous Tuka centers, first to introduce the outsourcing concept in pattern making and sample making, first to launch the automated pattern making system first to introduce the on-screen digitization concept and now the 0% financing option during the COVID crisis. And I'm sure many more new initiatives will come from Tukatek. Today's webinar, how 3D can work for your fashion business will address one of the biggest pain points in apparel manufacturing, the sample making and approval. Today's webinar will show how 3D CAD technology can address the issue scientifically and save a lot of your PCS time and resources. I would like to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Ram Sarin, founder and head coach of Tukatek. Mr. Ram Sarin needs no introduction amongst apparel enthusiasts across the globe. Even then, in his 47 years in the garment industry, he has owned hats as diverse as the business itself. In addition to being the top expert in bra manufacturing, he is also well versed in the complexities of men's suits tailoring and everything in between. Mr. Sareen has demonstrated this philosophy and expertise in his invaluable work as a consultant for the retailers, brands, and manufacturers. Our next panelist today is Savannah Crawford, Chief Collaborator in Tukatek. She helps apparel manufacturers maximize efficiency in their product development process by introducing technologies. From virtual sample making to an online sample room, she helps simplify the collaboration in a globalized apparel industry. While implementing these technologies in the real world, Savannah also collaborates in the, with the internal team to make the technology better. I would like to remind our viewers that both of our esteemed panelists are joining from USA a very good 12 and a half hours behind us. I would like to thank you both and welcome for joining us in such unearthly hours. Viewers can post their questions in the Q&A panel during the webinar. We'll take it up the questions at the end of the webinar. Over to you, sir, Mr. Sareen. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be joining you all. COVID-19 has created a new way of working. When we say I'm too tired, today we say I'm zoomed out. It had a different meaning, zoom in, but when you are zoomed in, for so many hours across the globe or internally, you can get zoomed out. Technology um, has played a major role to keep a lot of people employed, a lot of companies productive. We know, because we are a technology company, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our customers around the globe who got involved with PPE products and other products, even with the lockdown, they needed their pattern makers and marker makers to be able to work. Um, I'm very proud to say my team and my associates around the world worked tirelessly to give them 
licenses so that they can work from home. People can make patterns, do the grading, make markers, do the 3D sampling and all that. So we did not stop. And based on how technology has changed our way of thinking and working, I personally think that if used properly, we can actually do a phenomenal job. I'm very proud to have Savannah Crawford, who is a veteran in the industry. She just looks very young. Anybody who's under 30 is generally a very young person. Um, Savannah is a graduate of Cal Poly Pomona, one of the colleges we work with in the uh, R&D and development. And uh, she's been with us for a few years now. And literally, I can say that the number of years of experience that I have Considering the number of experience that she has, she has taught me a lot of things. This is what technology does. Technology can enable a lot of people to think out of the box, where we had to go through the entire process to visualize, to see what goes on. There are tools available. I'll let Savannah start it from here and then give you a little bit of background and I'll keep on speaking along with her, okay? Go ahead, Savannah. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you everyone for being here, and thank you for um, spending time with us today. So we'll start off with a simple diagram that shows a traditional retail model compared to an on-demand manufacturing model, and how the cycle is different specifically when we're adapting to poor product performance. Um, typically, when you're talking about a traditional retail model, there's the design and development, and then you go through the process of um, sampling and the approval, And but you don't really find out how a garment is doing until it's physically in a store, and that's really the when the truth comes out. Unfortunately, at that point, if a product is not performing well, your only option is really to discount it. And if that keeps happening, eventually it'll just get discarded. Um, however, with, so, you know, you can use that information to then go back to the design process for next time, but because it takes a lot of time to, to get through that process, a lot of the times um, it's a lot of, projections and hoping that you're right, but it, but you don't really have any way to adapt once you find out that something maybe isn't performing as well as you thought or as well as you had hoped. Um, compare that to an on-demand manufacturing model where products are not made until after they're sold. The design and throughout the design and development process, you can constantly circle back and keep refining and keep refining. Um, and with the use of 3D technology, instead of waiting until something is produced and delivered into a physical store, you could use 3D renderings to display things online and to gauge customer interest. And because you don't have a physical garment, you save a lot of time in the, in the pre-production and, and in the selling stage of things. Um, but then the beauty of that is because we don't have a lot of inventory, if something is performing poorly, there hasn't been as much of a of an investment of physical resources. And so at that point, if something isn't doing as well, it's easier to take an image off a website than it is to move physical product out of a store. And so you can keep going back. Maybe it's something simple and we just need to adjust the length or adjust the fit or something like this, or maybe it's just doing so poorly that you can just get rid of it from your product line. Um, the point is that working with an on-demand manufacturing model, and we'll explain more in detail about what that, that process looks like compared to traditional design and retailing, being able to go back and refine, it gets you a lot closer to what your customer wants right now instead of having to project so many months in advance you know the industry has been for you know the last several years trying to reduce that 
18 months to 12 months to six months. Some people have gotten it down to a little bit less, but the, the real thing is just shaving off that development time, which is where so much gets stacked up. And so looking at different ways of designing, developing, and producing can um, give a lot more agility to a fashion business so that you can meet your customers where they are. Tukatek um, in 2012 invented, exhibited the first on-demand manufacturing, meaning zero inventory at Cal Poly Pomona, where we actually took a model, body scanned the person, got the avatar, had the person design the garment on there, did the fitting, send that data to digital printer, printed it, cut it, sold the garment, and two hours and 43 minutes later, we delivered to that customer or that model. And this was done live at the college with 250 attendees to show the entire process, the concept of microfactory. Microfactory concept is you design digitally, you develop digitally, you display digitally, you sell, and then you make rather than you make, put it in the stores and hope to God that it, people like it. If they like it within time, if they don't, then we discard it, okay? Today, we have more than 160 companies around the world and quite a few in Asia also who are working on this model. It doesn't mean that you have to be small. I have a company, the first company in the world to go is a company called Voler, V-O-L-E-R. You're welcome to go to that website, voler.com. It's a California-based company. If you go to their site, not even one garment they show is physical or photograph. All garments displayed are digital to cut 3D garments. Google gives analytics what is not even being looked at. So it's very easy for me to redo that image and so on. My investment is blank fabric prepared for printing. I can do whatever category, top or bottoms, whatever print colorways and so on, because it's on demand. So I display it. Since I have zero inventory, rather than making small, medium, large, I'm making seven different sizes because all I have is digital patterns. It's not physical garment, there is zero inventory. So I now get to reach a larger spectrum of customers. I get better control of what my fit is going to be. Customer knows exactly. They choose, they pay. Automatically, a manufacturing order is generated from ERP. It pulls that pattern of that size, pulls the graphic of that, marries the two together makes a marker and send that marker to the printer which prints the panels with the related uh, print and then i have somebody to cut it which is automatic cutting and we'll show you that okay the objective again is to create zero waste make what you need or what you've sold and some of the startup companies have found this model to be extremely extremely profitable because my cost of starting is low and my risk is much lower. And I generally get financed by the customer because on the e-commerce, they are buying it, paying it, and then I'm making it, cutting and sewing it. My cutting and sewing has to have the efficient operation. We're not the first ones to do this 3D. Can you go to the next slide, please? If you look at it, the 3D, uh, I just, just want to show this video a little bit. This is a dress company where they actually make the garment in 3D, evaluate this, send it out to the printer. When the marker is made, this prints exactly to the same specification. And once this printing is done, this fabric then sends to the heat set because it's being printed direct to cotton. See, think, think again, this is working backwards or the right way. We have printed fabric. 
we are patterns there and then we are trying to match the pattern i'm in a digital space i don't have to worry about that and same the ink i'm printing only on the pattern pieces required go ahead it goes out to the automatic cutting now people say micro factory micro factory doesn't mean small and the ideas of the factories or the ideas of creating something new doesn't come in I just want to go into the history a little bit. In 2005, <clears throat> one of our swimwear customers, and at that time, digital printing had just come in. The consumption of the fabric in a swimwear was so little that I could make 10 garments from one yard. But in 2005, it was $200 a yard to do digital printing of one yard at outside service. So this customer of ours came and he said, can I not combine several styles and put it together? So we were the first one in the world to do this, where we married the pattern to the print, made a marker and created a file that it went out and the two yards gave me 15 or 18 styles. Then comes digital printing in the sublimation next one please another big customer of ours in 2008 a company called simsotex and they were the one who were doing it um in the last one please 2008 2012 was the um go ahead keep running it this was the concept shown in 2012 for the first micro factory. And these people were delivered. Volaire is the first one who, is, who put that in. They make bicycle apparel. And their SKUs run into thousands and thousands. The first Sri Lankan company that makes dresses, Avirate, was the next one to start doing that. The first company in Pakistan in 2015 called Lulusa, they started doing it. And then several companies in Pakistan, Khadi and Sapphire, these are all for domestic market people. So the, the evolution doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes one by one by one step. But we need to continue to find new ways just because we've reached one place doesn't mean we stop trying to find even simplifying further and further, okay? I wanna to go to the next one um, to explain how many of us know that 3D technology and virtual simulation has been in the industry for more than three decades. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, therefore I have always benchmarked automotive industry. If you look at the slide on, on the, the little video on the bottom left, it shows a car crash test, a simulated car crash test. It used to cost $100,000, no different than making a sample first and then finding out if fit is right, if look is right. It was very, very expensive proposition. So they started out, the first simulation was in the car crash testing, where we could actually measure at every point what happens. So the same thing, <clears throat> we wanted to do it in the apparel. So the first thing we got to do in the apparel, we create the foundation, right? So Savannah, you want to start from here? and Yeah, sure. So for for apparel, because when we when we use the metaphor of a car crash test compared to apparel sample making, it's basically equivalent to doing a fit session on a live fit model. Um, and so to make that happen and to make 3D go beyond just a pretty picture on a screen, there's a few things that must be done in in the preparation stage before we even talk about design. Um, so first I'll talk about the model development and also the fabric development. 
Um, so the model is arguably the most important part of this, getting the exact measurements, shape, and body posture of the live fit model to replicate apples to apples, um, what you see on the screen versus what you're going to see in real life. Now, once things started getting very spread around and it became too expensive for fit models to travel um, you know, around to, to try things on, one of the solutions that came about were the body forms. However, there were some challenges with those because number one, a lot of them are very dehumanized versions of the body. Um, they are typically representative of you know, some of those key measurements, but a lot of them are not very sophisticated. Um, they don't often look like people, they're cloth covered, so it's very easy to kind of just stick, stick the garment on the cloth where you want it to sit, and then you can say it looks good. But then when you get it on a live person, it hangs completely differently. Um, of course, there have been a lot of a lot of advancements in the body forms over the last, um, you know, for, for a little while now. But one of the challenges that will always be there, even if you are able to replicate the body perfectly, is that a body form doesn't move like a person does. And that's really key. And we'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But, you know, even even now that we're all sort of housebound, um, no one is static. Even when you're sitting at your desk, you're still moving your arms, you're reaching for things, you're sitting down, you still want your clothes to be very comfortable. And so, you know, whether you're doing cross country running, some kind of other athletic activity, whether you're doing a runway fashion walk, human beings are constantly moving. And so that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, when a fit model yeah, but, is is testing, she's, yeah, but, she's also uh, moving. And so we do that with 3D as well. I, I see a lot of people on there. So a lot of them, I'm sure, are in the export business, okay? So those who are sending samples, are they sending it to the for the fitting? At the end of the day, the only measure is, does that fit my fit model? In order to eliminate that, what we're going to do is, we are going to bring that fit model into the computer and have zero tolerance between how I see it on my avatar, you will see it on your fit model. Go ahead, next slide, please. So in order to do that, we have to get that fit model body into the system. Of course, we can measure it our different ways to digitally sculpt the body if the fit model doesn't allow us to scan them. But scanning is the best way of doing it. Go ahead. So we body scan the fit model. We sculpt it digitally. We are not trying to just capture her measurements. We are trying to capture her shape, even the posture, how she stands, because the garment is gonna drape according to her posture. So in order to have zero tolerance, we have to have these kind of strict measurements and strict guidelines so that we can calculate the collision of the fabric. Once that is done, depending on what category of products are being done, we will add motion. Motion, same motions that we ask fit model to do to test the fit. Sometimes it is just to show how the garment looks, but there are so many different categories that we need to make sure that we are able to fit the garment in those categories with the right amount of ease and so on. In the pants, the squat motion, in the panties, the jump motion, there are hundreds of motion that we offer, okay? Go ahead, next one, please. The second factor is the fabric. Let me run the videos, okay? Here we have four different girls wearing same garment, Go ahead on the video, please. So each fabric is going to drape differently. We need to be able to see how the fabric behavior is. We need to be able to see 
how is the fabric creating strain on the body in order to do that we have to have electronic values of this fabric material how does the denim or poplin or chiffon any stretch materials how do, how how the effect happens when i do certain motion okay so these are the things that we do um and we can actually verify this well, of course there are basic things of what the garment, what the fabric is, what their stiffness and bend and stretch and friction and so on. But rather than selling you a kit like all the other companies, it's absolutely impossible for two people to have the same skill level, for, regardless of the tools. So at Tukatech, we do the testing at no charge and we give you electronic data for that so that everybody has the exact information. So two things, number one, model, with the real-time motion simulation, fabric with the actual properties, how the fabric is gonna behave, so I can then simulate and see how my garment is working on this in the actual motion. I can see it, how the behavior of the fabric in the warp is or in the weft is or in the stretch or the pressure against the body in compression garments or the x-ray to see how much ease has been against the body all that information is available on the system because the objective is not to make a sample to do it digitally and have exact information can you imagine and I want you to pause and think one more time. I am going to do a car crash test. And then I'm going to go really crash the car to see if my data is correct. Do you think that would be a technology? Obviously not. So either you have technology that eliminates the process or don't use it. Go ahead, next one, please. All right, so as I said before, fit model, the fabric, and now comes what we call the pattern making because we're going to make a product. Now you can engineer that process, and I'm going to show you a short video. And if anybody misses out something, you're welcome to go to YouTube to get a channel and watch this video again, okay? Go ahead, Savannah. 3D fashion design is a powerful tool to see how a garment will look before it is cut and sewn. Tuka 3D takes virtual product development beyond design and into true 3D fitting. With an engineered design process powered by Tukatech's end-to-end fashion technology solutions, the 3D designer's creativity is backed up by smart technical fit. Tuka 3D models are sculpted from 3D body scan data, capturing the correct measurements, shape, and posture of live fit models. Tuka 3D models are animated with real-time motion simulation to analyze garment fit with movement. Once the 3D virtual model is created, the body shape is flattened to a 2D sloper pattern. The 2D sloper is a tracing of the unique curves and contours of the fit model's body, such as the shoulder slope, armhole, bust, waist, and hip. This sloper will become the master template for all future styles developed for this model. Sloper patterns are generated in Tuka APM for automatic pattern making. Though pattern making is a craft historically passed down by artisans, today's computers can learn the logic of pattern making so a person of any skill level can create beautiful 2D patterns. The model's measurements are entered into the sloper specification sheet, including seam allowance and grade rules. Tuka APM generates a graded sloper pattern which is ready to drape in Tuka 3D. The sloper pattern is added to Tuka 3D from the Tuka design system. The pattern pieces are arranged around the 3D fit model and the seam stitching is defined.
As the garment is draped, the 3D sloper fits the model like a glove. Next, she simulates actions performed during a live sample fitting. Real-time motion simulation is added directly in Tuka 3D without the need for another 3D software. The sloper is analyzed in motion with tension mapping views in stretch and pressure mode and can be isolated to the warp and weft directions. X-ray mode applies transparency to the fabric surface to check the balance and ease of the garment. Any styles built from the sloper will fit correctly the first time. After the shapes of the fit model's body are captured in a 2D sloper pattern, the pattern maker only needs to change the ease or style lines rather than start with a new pattern or ill-fitting reference block. The pattern maker draws the style lines directly onto the sloper template and shortens or lengthens the piece to suit the new silhouette. After all adjustments are finished, the 3D operator simply updates the draped 3D sloper to apply the pattern changes for the new style. All changes made to existing pattern pieces are applied without resetting the entire 3D draping process. Only the new pattern pieces need to be arranged and stitched. Because the pattern maker used the 2D sloper pattern as a template, they do not need to spend as much time verifying the fit for the new style. Colorways can be applied by the 3D sample maker in Tuka 3D or by a graphic designer in the print visualizer module of Tuka 3D Designer Edition. The simulated garment brought into the print visualizer is a blank 3D canvas for prints, logos, or textures. Prints added from the material editor can be scaled on the 3D garment. Designers have a built-in Pantone color library for solids. Designers can take advantage of the Print Visualizer graphic integration if they prefer to create colorways in their favorite graphic design software. They simply create artwork on the flat pattern layout and apply the finished design to the 3D garment surface. The designer analyzes all colorways as a 3D storyboard. They can render the storyboard or individual 3D garments for presentations and sharing. 3D garments are shared to internal or external teams on Tuka Cloud, the web-based digital sample room that connects every person involved with virtual product development to one platform. The process is repeated for every style developed for a brand to maintain a consistent fit regardless of product category. Wonderful. Thank you, Savannah. Uh, I see that there are more than 100 people attending it. Um, on the right side, there is a chat window. You're welcome to write your question. We will try our best to answer as many questions as possible, but we will get that done in the last 15 minutes. Okay. Going forward, the Q &A. The, I'm sorry. In the Q&A. In the Q&A, right. Thank you. Right. Now, <laughs> the Q's can be done, the A's will be done later. Okay. Again, this objective of showing this complete video was that it is not a one-person job. There's a designer somewhere, there's a developer somewhere, and the developer, there's a 2D pattern maker, there's a sample maker. Just the physical process requires a lot of people. 
how all of that product development process can be done under one platform. Many of you have heard what we call the term PLM, product life cycle management. I have yet to see one company actually using the true PLM system because it is a real convoluted supply chain. Many people are on it and a lot of them are not on the system. So the, the information chain breaks, whoever is not live on the system. So we broke it down. We call this process life cycle management between development and design. But one style, whatever went in stays in one file. Regardless of who does what to add value, they keep on doing it till internally it is approved, with the brand it is approved, and it's into production. Once it is into production, it becomes an asset. That means I always have a library by season, by category of what have I done. Remember, in the fashion industry, we don't start from scratch every time. And we'll talk about that in the later stage. Go ahead, Savannah. Next one, please. <clears throat> Again, the idea behind this one suite is to design, develop, and deliver digitally. Go ahead. Uh, you can take it from here. Sure. So um, within each of these systems, as we keep mentioning, um, it's important to think beyond just the design capabilities, but to remember that fit is always at the foundation. And so there's a number of different tools that you see in the clip that we just played where you can analyze the fit in motion on a realistic 3D body. And this is how the model communicates. So that when you get to the stage where we're talking about a colorway or an artwork placement or some other design variation, or even when you're looking at something, whether it's displayed online or whether you're um, looking at the 3D rendering, because of the foundational work that's done at the beginning, as we demonstrated in the previous clip, when you get to the stage of analysis, even of the design, you can be confident that the fit underlying is good because it was done on the right model with the right fabric and with a real pattern. And that's really um, that's really key to being able to work in a 3D space and to do so without adding to your workload, because we don't just want to add a, a digital process just for fun. We want to make sure that we're actually getting the most out of the technology and reducing the physical and time resources that are required during traditional physical sample making. Um, now, that being said, we did want to walk through a couple of examples of the different types of garments that can be done in 3D. So understand, of course, that um, you know these have all been done for, for various categories because we know that there are a lot of people doing a lot of different categories that may be watching this wondering, well, yeah, but can this work for my type of garment or my type of customer or, or something like this? And so we wanted to show and walk through the, some of the capabilities of this and hopefully start to um, run your imagination so that you can Think about how your products might not just look in 3D, but how you might use 3D to do the design and the fit approval. Yeah, the, these are done in, in Asia, in India, actually. We do have the largest 3D user base in the world, making all kinds of products. I see a question in there and I'll answer it. Yes, the 3D does take care of the blazers and jackets and suits and lining and multi-layer products because each fabric in a suit, if your front is fused, is going to behave differently than the soft material on the sleeve and so on. How the lapel is going to work. All that is doable so long as you understand your product and you've done your homework of creating a better base after that becomes cookie cutters. 
whatever you've done before, you can always continue to do that. Here's a great example. People want to see the embroideries. Why do I have to do the embroidery to do that? So many times the customer come in and say, you know what? What if I reduce the amount of inventory? What would be my cost? Here's an example. Well, if I have this embroidery versus this embroidery versus this, these are the costs. I don't have to make the sample. I cost the garment up, give it to the customer, and then and only then I will make a sample if the customer needs it. Okay. The objective here is to give them what it's going to look like digitally, get the approval, cut out the sample making cost and the time that it takes. Go ahead. There's lots of different uh, different effects that can be created in the 3D system as well, like shirring, ruffles, ties, uh, more complex kinds of things as well. The sheerness of the fabric. Um, here's an example of some garments that have smocking on them. So the in this case, we're even able to apply different stretchabilities to different parts of the garment because of course when we're doing smocking we're um we're pulling that in because of the fabric technique and so we're able to mimic that in 3d as well that shrinkage that's happening um, of course we can also do graphic designs and again because we're working with um, real-time motion simulation and um the there, there's so many different ways that you can present the yeah, final sometimes, artwork. Sometimes the designer wants to only look at how the garment is going to look like. They don't need to go through the fit motions and so on. Okay, This is for basically higher end designer who wants to just review the line, but review the line on how the garment is going to look like, whether it's dresses or whatever the products are. Okay. Even, the even graphic layout, where the placement is, how the placement is going to look like, what the motion is going to be. There are quite a few, few companies who do this. As a matter of fact, California is known for this. We have about five and a half million t-shirts sold every day as blank t-shirts, hoodies, where the second tier of uh, value add people who add colorways and graphics and embroideries and so on. They are going from B to B, from blank map manufacturers. They are buying the raw materials and then they are adding the value. They don't have to make the strike offs. They can just do it right on 3D system for $29. Okay. Go ahead. Colorways can be seen. Okay. Without the sample. This is an amazing one. As a matter of fact, the first company who started doing this is also an Indian company, KKCL. Uh, I'm sure you guys know that company, Killer Jeans. Um, they started doing this in 2012. Today, all these jeans or denim industry has gone into laser finishing. So once we have done the 3D garment, the fit is already done. Now is the matter of creating the look. Why do I have to make the sample? I can put the zipper digitally. I can put the buttons digitally. I can even take the digital data that is going to drive my laser machine. I can visualize the garment, what the finished garment will be and get that approval. I don't even have to make the laser garment sample, even one. So we create a whole line Send it out. Pakistan is using that day in and day out on almost every company. Okay. USA, of course. Go ahead. Okay. So now we can talk about cloud a little bit. Cloud is the key. This is our patented process. It comes free with the system, but this is the one which I call the glue. It binds everybody together, but creates a book with all the data in there, all the communication, there's no emails. Whatever happened, happened right within the two people, regardless of where they were 
in which time zone okay go ahead sure so yeah the the communication mechanism is built into to the cloud i'll kind of start maybe from the end here um as was kind of touched on a little bit earlier within to the cloud this is like a web-based digital sample room because one of the challenges that we faced when we started implementing 3D was the obvious benefit of uh, being no longer having to deal with physical samples created a different sort of problem, which was now there's all this digital data that needs to be managed. So that would include the pattern, of course, that was used to make the 3D garment, the 3D garment itself, all of the different texture and colorway and artwork files that are used to decorate the garment, um, tech packs, measurement charts, every single piece of data that goes into the sample now being digitized, where do those get stored? How do you share that to somebody who doesn't have a 3D system? These were sort of the challenges that came out. Um, and for a little while, people were able to manage with email. Um, we were able to create different kinds of 3D viewers and um, videos that were uh, compatible with different types of operating systems and even mobile phones. Um, but the more data that comes obviously needs to be managed a little bit differently. And so this is where the process lifecycle management concept comes in that this to the cloud sort of serves as the central hub for all of the data relating to the 3D samples. Um, so whether you're on the, the vendor side, you're doing the development of the pattern, you're creating the 3D sample um, and, and creating the output, or if you're on the approver side, you log in and you see the final result and you do the approvals that way, everybody is connected on this one platform. So regardless of if you're actually the person who's sitting down to simulate a 3D sample, if you're not, if you're not the one that's digitally sewing it together, you can still have a 3D experience with the web-based viewing platform. And the beauty of this, of course, is the communication piece. So not only do you have all of the files that go with this sample in one place, you also have the communication as well. Um, now, I'm sure most of the people that are online right now in this, in this webinar have experienced um, probably hundreds of times where you get copied on something thing that has nothing to do with you on some email chain and you just are there for FYI or maybe you did need to be but then someone forgot to reply all and it's now five different threads no one knows what's going on and it can be very hard to track with a conversation in that kind of environment if people aren't paying attention and so what we did with Tuka Cloud was we put the communication within the platform itself related to that particular style so if we're talking about this denim jacket, AY0721 style for fall 2021, everything related to all the conversations related to the style are also kept online. So whether that's internal communication or external communication, there's a, essentially a digital paper trail so that we can see why, why was a change made? Who initiated it? When was it made? Is it delayed? Was it done properly? And if something was wrong, we, we have a way to go back and check and see, not to necessarily point fingers or blame, but just to understand where communication is breaking down. Finally, because now we're online and we're able to track everything, we have a lot, we have better analytics as far as how do we know um, kind of the health of this digital workflow. So, um, you're only as good as the information that you have. And so if you don't know how many digital samples are in process, uh, what, which, which brands are taking the longest time to, to get approvals or which brands have the high, do you have the highest rejection rates with? How many on average samples do you need to go through before you actually get the approval digitally? Um, this is where kind of figuring out the ROI on something like this becomes really handy because you actually have the numbers right in front of you. Um, and so that's really good for day to day as well as kind of the bigger picture of planning out what to work on next and how to allocate talent and resources.
Um, so that's sort of illustrated here a little bit. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, the process engineering, which is sort of a, a recurring theme of this conversation. Um, so within Tuka Cloud, the structure is sort of built in. And so this is part of um, getting the most out of a 3D system is making sure that the process is properly implemented, properly engineered. And so being able to determine what work is done within the, the team internally, at what stage is something ready for external approval, um, once something is approved, uh, what is the next stage for, re for pre production? Um, that's also the, the type of things that we are, um, are helping you to figure out. It's not a, it's not necessarily meant to be a, a one size fits all. You must follow this so rigidly. Everybody has a different process that they must follow depending on the brands they're working with, depending on the product category they're in. Um, so the systems that are described here are not necessarily um, they're not so rigid that they, they can't be, you know, maneuvered to fit your needs. Um, but there, there's also plenty of structure built into them that you're not needing. You're not the one that has to figure out how to make it work. It's easier for us to come alongside and help you piece this puzzle together in a way that makes sense. All right. Um, next is, we want to touch on the Tuka 3D Designer Edition, also known as the new design room. And this is one of the, the newer technologies that we are, have been working on. And this is to give the designers and the, the creative people, the people that know what they want to see at the end of the day, but they don't necessarily have the pattern making background. Uh, um, maybe they don't even want to do pattern making. They don't want to simulate a garment. They just want to take something and place their artwork on it and see how it's going to look. Um, there's a, of course, there's a, a, a perfect place for those, for that type of person. And so that's why we built this tool so that those, the, the, that type of creativity can really flourish in a 3D process. I just want to mention, um, if you go back to the last slide for a minute, um, just to wrap that up, um, those of you who are in the garment industry, you know that there are a lot of iterations of samples. The last ones, when we go in within our own company, um, making a PP sample, and then somebody's asking for a size set, because they don't trust your grading, or then you're running a pilot to make sure that you actually have exactly all the steps that you've done that for sample. There are a lot of what I call the nonsense steps or slowdowns or cost. How can we eliminate all of that? Grading is a pure science. I don't need to grade again and again. So when we are engineering a pattern room, we are starting from a sloper pattern, as the video showed. The sloper pattern, the term comes in, taking the slopes of the human body, flattening in 2D, capturing that shape. So I have the shoulder slope, the armhole, the neckline, and all the body in two-dimensional flat pattern. Basically, that's how the tailor measures your body. And then they add what they call the ease factor or the delta. The difference between those measurements is what creates the garment. That's pattern making. But remember, if you look at your spec sheets coming in from customers, the measurement for the sample size may change according to the style. I want you guys to please pay attention to this. Size and fit are two different things. Size and fit are two different things. Size is that fit model's body, the shape, the measurements. That remains constant. That is the Bible. That is the start of or finishing 
support that brand. They want to keep that consistent sizing. Fit is design related. Designer wants a tight fitting garment, the measurements change. The loose fitting garment, longer, shorter, wider, tighter, doesn't make a difference. That's a designer, but it must fit that same size, that body. So if we have captured that shape and we've just adjusted the fit related adjustments to the pattern, the garment should fit first time, correct? Now comes the grading. So look at the spec sheet again, you will find these sample size measurements will change according to the new style being developed, but up and down the same amount of grading information will stay constant. If it was 30 and this is 28 and this is 32, that two inch grade will always remain for every style. What does that mean? The grading doesn't change. Where does the grading reside? It resides on the contour outside of the pattern. I can make it expand or shrink according to grade rule is the measurements of the sample size. So what do we do? We make the sloper. We apply the master grade rule of that customer, that brand, that retailer onto the sloper. So when I make a new garment from that sloper, the grading is already with it. What does that mean? My grading stays consistently same every time, regardless of what number of styles I present. So if I've done my one size set, regardless of how many styles I do, my size will be exactly the same. Now, our 3D system, we have created the smallest size avatar, the largest size avatar, and we can actually check and send that to the customer to show, hey, this is how your smallest garment is looking at and the largest garment. What did I do? I did it once, but I eliminated making my size set. That is a huge number. Second thing, for all of you who are not following, you must make your sample room exactly the same as your factory is going to be. What does that mean? Use the same folders, same machines, exactly the same, which is going to be used in the factory. So while you're making the final sample or one sample, you're actually making it as though you're running a pilot. Okay. What will that do? Eliminate making the samples because every time your sample is approved, your production is same. Every time they get the sample, which is the final approved sample, the physical sample comes in and they see zero difference between what they saw versus what they got. They eliminate that 10 days. 2005, first company to get that status was a company called Hydramani Industries in Sri Lanka. Tesco gave them an award in Hong Kong as the best use of technology. They eliminated making samples in 2005. That was 15 years ago. 95% of Sri Lanka uses Tukatech. It's only because the technology they understand and they really, really use it to the best capabilities. They are the people who have actually helped us a lot in further improving our systems because when you start working, you start getting all the ideas. People at the innovation level are the ones who are actually doing something. On the paper, we don't do innovation. Factories are the places where the innovation is done. Now comes the designer edition. Again, this functionality that Savannah is going to talk about is available in our Tuka 3D system. Just remember, the Tuka 3D system is an expensive system. So I want to utilize it for the best possible use and get maximum number of productivity out of that. I want to make a 2D pattern. So I have a 2D pattern maker. So now I'm going to make a sample. I could cut physically and sew it and then see it or sew digitally 
verify the fit. So I'm a digital sample maker on 3D. That's all. I want to stop right there. I don't have that person's capabilities to have the designer's eye. So we upload that onto Tuka Cloud. Now think on the other side, there are designers who are creating either the embroideries or the colorway or the print or the placement, the border is gonna look like this. They have the artwork. Now they cannot imagine what the final product is gonna look like. Even if they make a sketch in, in Illustrator or something, it is never to the scale. So we broke down that, risk, that functionality and for $29 a month, the designer can now bring the blank 3D garment onto the design or graphic system where I created my designs and so on. And I'm gonna visualize actual placement of that artwork and see how the 3D garment is gonna look like. What does that mean? I mean, I am a creative person, I'm a designer, but I'm not a pattern maker. Every great designer has great pattern makers working behind them, okay? But here I am, I'm able to create my own storyboard. I'm able to create my salespeople, uh, look at the entire thing without making a sample. So you made a 3D garment, I made what the final product is gonna look like. And that is done on the designer edition, okay? for $29 a month on the application. So we separated that rather than working. Now, I, I will talk about this. I, I, I think this may be the time to talk about. In, in uh, order to have um, this, uh, look, uh, I'm from India, okay? India is, um, that's where I was born. I left 46 years ago, but you know, you can take an Indian out of India, but you can't take India out of an Indian, okay? Uh, my heart is always there. I want to see people do something better with the least amount of effort and least amount of investment. I am the founder of this company. We're a privately held company. I'm not getting a pressure from investors because we have none. I'm not a public company. I don't have to give quarterly results. My objective is to make a difference in the industry before I go away. $29 a month. I can make a person a 3D designer for under $50 investment without having a 2D pattern maker, without having a 3D system. And Savannah will show you how that thing works, okay? You can get that started today if you like. Go ahead. I get, well, I get emotional about India. <laughs> no worries. Um, but but I I'm the citizen of the world. Okay, I do have four passports, okay. <laughs> um, well, we do have some examples of what this output can look like for um, specifically Indian garments, um, which I think will be um, nice for some people to see. And then maybe at the end, we can go over um, what, how that software, how you can get it and how, you know, what, how you can learn how to use it. Um, so I'll, I'll maybe jump into this next, um, just some more examples of the capabilities. Um, once you have the, the, the base silhouette done, um, you can apply so many different colors, so many different textures and embroideries and all of these different effects, um, to create these 3D line sheets. So it can be for any kinds of occasion garments, any kind of day wear or fashion garments. It's, it's really a great tool for um, people who are particularly creative in the artwork and graphic design to be able to show what that print is going to look like and and it's it's useful for for both sides i think to be able to see what is a particular placement going to look like um how can we rescale this or replace this or or even you know if you're able to work with some kind of uh, pattern maker you know or maybe we can make this ruffle here and make 
know. There's so many different ways that you can I'll, work I'll with this. I'll take an food. example. I'll take an example. Uh, in India, there's a company called uh, Fab India. I don't know how many of you have been to those stores, but uh, if you haven't, please do go there and see. You will find racks and racks of clothing. Um, the silhouettes are almost the same. One of our um, very, very large customers is in Pakistan. And those of you who are doing domestic garments, you will know a brand called Khadi, K-H-A-A-D-I. It's actually Khadi. Um, in Khadi, they are, uh, I think, 16 pattern makers and three 3D operators. But there are 82 designers who work on this $29 a month application. They are doing the embroidery design and the print design and the colorways and the placement of all that to the extent that today Khadi does not make even one sample. From 3D garment, they go straight to production. They are retailers. That is the power of creating digital environment within the place, but it has to be done end-to-end -end solution. So whatever has been done once becomes an asset. So I can use it again and again. In order to do um, or help a lot of domestic people, we started a, a ethnic database in our system where we will be launching it all kinds of men's and women's and children categories of kurta pajama or the vest or whatever the you know the the jackets with um meru collar and all the things that we wear in the ethnic wear basically to make sure that the look which is being created is created digitally on a 29 dollars a month application so i don't have a pattern maker but i want a pattern if you go to a sari shop there's a guy who's selling and he shows this is how the sari is going to look like he's not fitting the garment you want to see it how the garment is going to look like but one of the largest sari companies in india the owner's daughter studied in fit and when she went back this is nine years ago this was done this was done nine years ago, this graphic. And she came back and the father wanted her to start the business. That's she's the only child. She said, not unless I have the 3D technology. Because why do I have to create? We got some amazing work that she's done, or whether it's Zari work, or whether it's a silk, or whether it, basically garment stays the same. It's the look and the feel that changes. Look um her investment paid off in such a short time rather than making the whole garment and then you're trying to see what the garment is going to look like look into your own businesses 85 percent of the samples you produce today become garbage 85 percent why do i have to make the whole building and then decide where the window goes the door is smaller or bigger. Why can't I do it digitally? That is the purpose of this entire thing. Go ahead. Um, so the next thing is um, a, another short clip that shows a little bit more about um, kind of how this whole, and uh, again, how this whole thing sort of ties together with all of these different tools and how they can connect people in with people doing different processes, even in different parts of the world. Um, I don't know. Do you want to narr I, I, narrate I, over I, this one? Yeah, I want to explain this because we live in California. California is 44% of all clothing coming to the United States is designed in California. California is where trends start. Now, when you walk in to the design and development room, they have racks and racks and racks of samples. 82% of California garment industry uses our technology. 
we have earned amazing reputation here. 19 colleges teach with our technology. The kids coming out have amazing 2D, 3D value add from day one. But how were they actually working? Because remember, these people actually have the sample rooms. 13 times a year, they take a line of four or 500 styles to the market week to show what their new products are. Every month, they have to develop three to 500 new styles. They don't start from scratch everything. I have seen so many times designer would walk into the showroom where the sample racks are. I like the neckline of this style. I like the sleeve length of this one. I like the length of this garment. She may take two, three garments and walk up to the pattern room and say, this is what I want. Now, what does the pattern maker have? They have the 2D patterns for all those styles. They bring the components from all of those, bring into one and make a 3D garment and say, this is what you want, is done. So I said, okay, why can't we do it on 3D? We have 3D garments. Now, Savannah, can you run this video for a second, please? <laughs> we have 3D garments. So this is another module from the assets we call Garment Builder. Garment Builder will be released in about 60 days and that'll be a $79 a month, but that eliminates making patterns also. I can bring my garments on my dashboard, go into my Garment Builder and say, all right, I want to see this with this lot, with this product. So I'm basically taking components from my assets and putting it all together to make my new garment. Now I'm a designer. I don't know patterns, but these garments had the 2D patterns as the baseline and then the 3D. Now I send that to the print visualizer person who's developing all the prints. And now they can see in the real scale how the garment is going to look like with the placement of that or by mixing the, the, the prints or having the placement of the border prints. But once I'm done with that, there is no more tech pack needed. I can create my own storyboard. I can create an internal line and say approve. If they approve it, I upload in cloud to my vendor. The vendor gets the 3D sew by sample and all the digital print files. Now, the person at the vendor level has a Tuka CAD. Remember, these components came from 2D to 3D and back to 2D. When I open it, all pattern pieces are already there. I don't even have to make a pattern. I now apply different fabric property that has been asked for and sew the garment digitally in my 3D system, check the motion, check the fit, how the garment is fitting, see it in x-ray, see it in the color tension mapping. If I approve it internally, I upload back for the team. Is that what you wanted? So everybody started from digital and I'm still at the digital, but now the person looking at it, they can zoom it, they can rotate it, they can make the comments on that. This is what I wanted, yes, okay. Now I send it to the sample making or demand manufacturing. So we have another plugin with the Adobe. The print files that came in go directly on the pattern pieces and the marker is made. So it doesn't matter, I don't have to have front and back to match. I can put it side by side and rotate the print because it's digital printing. I can mix four or five prints rather than having four or five different fabrics and matching or taking out certain components. That is the beauty of working in digital space. Send that out to the digital printer, print my one garment, Underneath there is a type marker, so I've used less fabric, less ink, 
And I can even take that and put that up on the e-commerce to show what the garment is going to look like, okay? The objective here is to cut out at every step any waste, whether it's the cost or the time or, or, or opportunity, okay? All right. Thank you. Next one, please. That's it. Okay. So, Savannah, you've been very helpful. Um, we can start with the question and answers. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I think I'm amazed uh, the number of participants is consistently above 105 in the last one. So it is it is shows the probably the kind of interest people are taking to understand the 3D. And there are a lot, lot of questions actually is a certain point of uh, time in your discussion you have answered. But I will still I will pick up some of the questions uh, which probably needs a little bit of deliberation. So one question was regarding the platform, like if there is a buyer or if there is a manufacturer who has to partake. 3D and he is doing that. If a buyer also need to have the same platform to see, no. to collaborate or or no, or. No. It has, if, no. if just... As a matter of fact, um, um, there are. See, uh, okay. Very good question because a lot of people think my buyer has to tell me which 3D system. Yeah. The yeah. buyer is doing nothing. They are not making pattern. They are not making sample. They are initiating the process. They are approving the product. So we need to give them those permission. All we've done is given digital platform rather than sending them a physical sample. We're now sending them a digital sample. To that physical sample, they were putting it onto a person. We're showing that on that person in digital space how your fit model's body. Right now, we have a library of 750 plus fit models which belong to different brands and retailers. Remember, my, my focus was never to work with brands and retailers because they don't have any capabilities of developing and they are working with the vendors. A poor vendor, their specialty was cut and so they were not really equipped to design the fit and create the sample they got forced into that extra responsibility so vendors wanted to get this sample approval process out of the way as quickly as possible at the lowest possible cost so we started working with vendors you know there are hundreds and hundreds of companies who never even shared one 3D sample with their buyers. They use 3D for just internal to make sure that in the proto stage, because what happens right now, you're creating a sample, but you don't know the quality of the pattern by looking at the flat pattern. You have to cut a sample, sew yeah. a sample, put it on the dummy or a person say, oh, now you know what mistake is, you correct that mistake in the pattern and you go again. So sometimes the internal team will reject two to three iterations before the account executive has approved what the garment they think the designer wanted. Yeah. I wanted to reduce even one sample iteration had a payback. Okay. So the buyer, before buyer gets the sample, we wanted to make sure we have done all the work and make one garment and send it. What happened? What happened? The results were astonishing. Astonishing. That 12 week period that the designer and, and, the, and, the, and the vendor had, the vendor sent the first sample and 97 plus percent of the first submitted samples got approved. When that got approved and the brand sees that, oh, I have more time. Can you do two more style? Can you do two more style? It's not that the brand is working only with one vendor for all their production. They give out work to various vendors because they know that 
amount of time that they will take in getting the samples ready and approved, there will be just enough time. So by reducing their product approval and cycle time, they were able to increase their business with the same. Now, we wanted to reduce that, so they took a cloud. I am the one as a vendor who is using the 2D, 3D technology. Therefore, it is my IP. Okay. I give you, just like I give an internal person permission to go look at it. So we created a 30 minute training for the brand and retailer. They buy nothing. This is browser based. They can log in okay. do their uh, credentials. And now they can look at the sample. They can see the fit. They can make comments. Question now was the comments rather than sending an email with 15 people on the file, the 14 have nothing to do with it. Now it goes back to the person. It's like talking to each person for each things. This yeah. is the whole process, but I'll uh, give you an example. Um, there are a few brands here who have zero investment and there are a lot of Indian companies who supply to that brand. Each and every of those companies will tell you that after starting with this brand, they came to us that can we do the same thing with other brands now? The investment is only at the person who is going to add value. Okay. Everybody else gets it free. Everybody, okay. internally and externally. Okay, thank you very much. I think that, that clarifies, I think, um, many of the similar kind of questions which was coming in. Then a little bit of, uh, I think, technical questions coming in now. It's like how the elastic and stretchable fabrics have simulated, like whether a pure elastic can be you know, factored in, how exactly the software takes care. And the second question, probably again related to a little bit of body shape as well as the, this elasticity. It says how the underbust area in a bra is taken care in 3D. What challenges may occur in the process? Good question. Um, Savannah, I don't know if you have a video of showing that uh, swimwear, it is on YouTube somewhere. Um, those of you who want to get a lot more information, just go to YouTube, um, Tuka Tech uh, channel, and there are hundreds of videos showing hundreds of examples, okay? We're not hiding anything. We're, we were totally open company, transparent. We help competition to go ahead. If you can also develop it, it will be helpful to the industry. Okay. There are certain things that we have done with millions and millions and millions of dollars invested, which are patented. Tuka Cloud is a patented process. There are few processes that we have done, which are patented processes, but rest of them. Um, okay, go ahead. Now remember, in swimwear, each fabric has got what we call the stretch ratio. Same thing that applies in, this is, um, oh yeah, okay, I remember this one. This is Pakwa, right? The Chinese company. I'm sorry, you're showing showing to the wrong crowd. Uh, the swimsuit's okay. the same. <laughs> okay, the process is the same, right, right? Yes. So we sew it. Now, physical properties given to the fabric are same as what the properties of the fabric are. Therefore, the garment is going to have to be done smaller than the body, and the stretch factor takes over. Now, stretch factor is considered two things. One is, where is it when it is absolutely comfortable? It's not cutting in. And if it is too much extra given, then there'll be a hole because it's not hugging the body in the right way. So in the swimwear, hugging the body is an extremely important one, but so is the comfort, okay? So we're testing this motion and so on creating in a real life, real time motion simulation where the behavior of the fabric as it is colliding 
we can actually check. We can check it in warp, in weft, in stretch, as well as in the pressure against the body. This is the pressure against the body. And the same thing applies in bras also, okay. Now, I wanna see if in this video they have, see, you're showing what does each color mean, okay? Red doesn't mean it's bad. It means it is hugging the body. If you need to know the value of red, it will show you at what percentage is it. Is it 3% tight or 5% tight or 10% or 50%? And then the intensity, if you see it in the third row, there is a green to yellow to orange to red. That just keeps showing me the values. So I, because the dummy can't talk and tell me how the garment is fitting, we need to have some kind of a communication. And that's one way of communicating. Go ahead, Savannah. I can see it in x-ray, I can see the colorways, I can see the inside, the outside. I think while you're showing this, there is another related question, which is little, I think I find it interesting, Mr. Sareen. Yes, sir. Yeah, because somebody is asking, while uh, we have this x-ray and we have this uh, stretch characteristics, uh, we can check while we're doing 3D, why we need to come back and manually adjust and then again go back and see that how it is adjusted. Why can't it auto-correct? Why, why can't the software auto-correct the fit? Okay. <laughs> fit is a very personal thing. Fit, as I said before, it is actually designer related. Designer is creating a product based on the fabric and the category, how, what kind of fit as a general, what kind of fit do they want to give? But when it comes to consumer, fit itself is a very personal thing. One person with the same body may buy a size small because that's my business clothing, but may buy medium because this is my hoodie and I want a little bit more comfort in there. That doesn't mean that person's body has changed. So for us to decide that they let the computer put the artificial intelligence in there, that is not the idea. For that, we have done the APM. The automatic yeah. pattern making is the artificial intelligence, which is basically tracing the body and creating a contour of that into a flat pattern totally automatically by putting the measurements. There is no human touch in there. It took me 12 years, Dr. Jana. Yeah. I never gave up. Even my own teams, they kept thinking that I am out there on a wild goose chase. Mm -hmm. How can computer make patterns? We have masters who make patterns. If I could learn making patterns and I'm a mechanical engineer, I thought of only one thing. What were the logics the person was trying to teach me in pattern making. Why can't I teach computer those logics? This what separates us to think out of the box. I want to have a wish list, not adjusting the pattern according to what computers should think. That's where I think people have to put their input. And the fit is not related to just the style. It's also the behavior of the fabric the drapeability of the fabric. So it's a multitude of information that is required. For example, the pressure against the body. You're making compression garments. I have a client here in Manhattan Beach who makes, it's a patented product. Uh, they made um, a sports bra, okay? For women who are heavy chested, bigger breasts 
their biggest problem is when they are running the breasts go up and down and up and down and up and down because even if i have a compression garment it doesn't so they created a patented product which is inside sewn in which is rigid to hold the breasts at one place so when they are running and they want to see now how much pressure is there against the body to be able to measure remember i cannot get the feedback from the person or from the computer is that comfortable enough those are the kind of information that we can eliminate and then standardize okay so you mean to say this brand mari m a r w -E? i can't tell you that brand name because oh, okay okay that's fine i i think uh, you know some of the attendee wanted to ask questions personally because we thought that we'll allow two or three of them Prashanta, can you, uh, can you, I think, allow the attendees to ask the question? So we have one now, Alka. So okay. 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 Go ahead, Alka. Alka, go ahead. You can. You wanted to ask what question? Unmute her, please. Okay. Uh, Prashanta, I think you need to unmute because she cannot because she is attendee. Well, done. Allow her to share the video and the voice. Yes. Is is she? No, it is not yet not yet unmuted. Okay, so, uh, the Guru Priyan can talk. Mm -hmm. So actually, I'm on a web design student from Chennai. You need to be a little louder, Guru Priyan. You need to be a little louder. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hi, sir. This is Guru Priyan. Huh. Yeah. Sir, I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I have a question regarding the 3D pattern making learning from India. I'm an advanced design from the final year from this Chennai. I would like to pursue on learning to cut X software. Like, uh, what's the procedure? Do do you have any course, separate course in India, which I can learn from? As a short term or a regular course? Vanna? Yeah, um, short answer is yes. Um, we have a couple of different packages. I did see one of the questions in, uh, or a couple of people in the Q&A also asking, you know, how can we, how can we get our hands on this thing? So for the 3D designer edition software, we'll start there. Um, there, you can get it from to the web com. Um, maybe it'll be just easier if I share my screen and then um, we'll have it for reference as well. Oh, so, so you can give them the link. If yes. you can you provide the link. We'll be sure. Sure. We'll be sure to. So uh, give you the long answer on that, that one. There are more than right 500 now. colleges who teach with Tukatech technology in India. Okay. And uh, if your NIFT is not using it, you need to go talk to Dr. Jana because we oh, have. Like, we are, we have thought. So actually, right. we have thought like uh, the basics uh, we have taught in Tuka, where, Tuka pattern making, uh, but I would like to learn like more in detail regarding the 3D pattern making. and Right, the, right, you know, sure. right. Sure. We, have, we, are are offering, college. we are offering a new online learning platform for basic CAD and 3D and so on. The designer edition, uh, I think Dr. Jana will give you all the details. Yeah. Uh, we have decided to give the participants who are taking the next training class a $29 training course at no charge, but only to the people who are participants for the training so that they can get that. And they can also download the actual designer edition software, which comes with certain assets also for $29, but at no charge to you as part of the registration for the seminar for the next one, which is I think in two weeks or so. Yeah, just, just add, add what yeah. you say. So this is basically, we want you to get a hands on and then play with it yourself and so on. It's pretty intuitive, okay? Yeah. Um, okay it doesn't that. take thousands and thousands of dollars of investment, okay? Uh, we have thousands mm -hmm. of people using this, but uh, in India, it is the first time we are doing it. Okay. Yeah, just to add on, 
Mr. Sarin said, good Priyan. Now, yes, there, there will be a uh, workshop on 27th in the same platform where you will be uh, taught a little more details. Today, you have seen the what are the possibilities. But in the next, yeah. so you will be taught in detail. But that, that will be a paid seminar. But then you are going to get more value back because Tukatek is giving free instead of the $29. So you are actually getting, I think, $58 of free softwares to use it. So just look okay. for the uh, the opening of the registration. So there it will be less number of people because it is a kind of workshop. So okay. just do the registration if you wanted to learn the Tuka 3D. So I'll just share my screen once. Okay. Uh, you will see the... And any of you who want to attend, I host a show called Tuka Talks. Tuka Talks is a conversation between the experts sharing their experience. And I bring different guests from different places who specialize in their own field, whether it's retailers or brands or designers or uh, at, at a request made by uh, NIFTA and VISTA and all the people, um, I have decided to run a Tuka Talk Live, a uh, similar platform that you are seeing right now, and that yeah. is absolutely free. I think that's on the 29th, which is a Monday. Uh, you can go to my website and register from there. It is absolutely free. Those of you know, uh, I call him my guru. I have a lot of gurus, okay? I've, I learned from, uh, Savannah is my guru in a lot of areas. There are a lot of learnings and there is nothing to be shy about learning. There is, there is no ego involved in this one. Give the credit from wherever you learn and that person is kind of motivated to teach you more and share more information. There is a gentleman called David Birnbaum. I don't know how many of you have heard this legend called David Birnbaum. He is my guest on that show. I have his daughter who did amazing work at Levi Strauss in their product development. And she is doing wonders in British Council, in the Fashion Council in the, in the UK. She is going to be another guest of mine. And a young man, 24 year old, which should resonate to a lot of people in India because there are a lot of family owned businesses and the parents and grandparents or whoever started it, they want their children to do the same thing. This 24 year kid in Pakistan who comes from a very wealthy family, went to college in uh, London School of Economics and came back and rather than doing the family business, decided to do it something so different. And I don't want to take his thunder away. So he is one of my guests over there. So I promise you the 29th of June seminar, webinar, Tuka Talks will be a historic one. Okay. It's very rare to find a talent like that to put it together for one hour. Okay. okay. Those of you who are interested, or you want to share with your friends and your family or, or your customers or your whoever, just go ahead. We expect about 700 to 1,000 people attending that. Okay, Prashantu, we'll take the last question. Is anybody else there? Uh, no, sir, nobody is there. So okay. You can attend Q&A questions. Okay, I, I think there's no more question, uh, Q&A questions. There are questions. You can show the bra thing, uh, if you can, okay. you know, the... Hydroman is with the H&M. Okay. Um, I don't have anything in front of me right now but the suits, but I, we do a lot of suits. In mm -hmm. Italy, in Spain, even in India, the European fit and so on, or Jodhpuri suits and so on. We're doing... Um, um, 
a new customer who's doing for horseback riding and all different clothing and so on. Custom clothing for them, okay. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know what they say, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Well, yeah. this is Friday night. Rather than going out at almost midnight, we are with you guys, okay? So yeah. TGIF, okay? <laughs> I, I, thank, I, I, God, I, I, thank God it's India Friday, yeah. okay? Okay, I, I so think, yeah, no we'll problem. Stop because it is but this, this is a um, cup shaped, okay? but. Go ahead, uh, Savannah, you can take it. To be able to see, visualize in different colorways and so on, okay. The underbus is the one which is the most one. We, we cannot, I'm gonna repeat that, we cannot simulate the behavior of the cup because in bra, that's the only category where the pressure is measured how the breast moves. So now the we can do the movement and the behavior of the fabric against that body, but we can't show if we put the underwire how the breast moves up. So we've created the motion where the breast, if pushed up in a demi cup, how would the garment fit? If it is a natural one, how the garment would fit? Uh, one of the largest companies in America who makes shapewear. You ask for stretchability. Please go through my LinkedIn post where we show how the garment works. This company is a company called Cupid, C-U-P-I-D. They have about 5,000 employees, factories in Nicaragua uh, and, and, and Mexico, as well as an American company. They make in one garment four different fabrics because the, the tummy is being, this is their garment, okay? The good thing is they have only two colors, one black. Uh, there is one question coming from attendees. Uh, only, only the last one because we only already past midnight there. I think we should. Okay, after this, we'll take this question. All your questions for the yes. next, for the training seminar. Yeah. That is interactive, okay? Yes, yeah. So we're sewing this. Remember, this is, stop it for a minute, Savannah. There is two different layers of garment in here. Just go back a little bit. Go back. There. In the back, you will see there are two, two different layers, okay? Because, and there's three different fabrics in this one. Each fabric has different stretch ratio to be able to pull and compress the body, okay? That's what the larger size woman can have a very trim shaped body with that. And we're the only one who can do it in 2D and 3D sewing, okay? Now we sew it. Simulate it, add the motion to that, visualize it, see how the garment fits. Visualize the fit and do the tension stretch test. See that stretch amount showing? This has a 25% stretch ratio. That means it is ease. There's the pattern can be tightened a little bit still give a good good fit on this one okay the stretch ratio is always given by the manufacturer depending on the amount of lycra okay swimwear works the same way okay okay yeah i i think we we close here because i think a lot of question you you answered and i think there are some comments coming somebody from saint lucia and there the time is I think 2.44 a.m. in the midnight and they're saying they're very happy attending this and very, very knowledgeable for her. I, I don't know who she is, but
but i think there are people all over the world who are attending so in india we are in a better time zone thank you very much both of you for uh, for actually making this very very interactive and very very knowledgeable and to all the interested ones who are because there are many many comments which are coming want to, i wanted to learn more i wanted to learn more uh, tukatek has offices in india and uh, that's you will be able to get that details and on 27th we are holding a workshop which will be more detailed in terms of learning today you have learned what are the possibilities and then on 27th you will learn how to do it yourself and as uh, mr sarin already has said that you are going to get the software of 29 dollar free once you register for that uh, workshop and i think we look forward to your participation in 27 Thank you once again, Mr. Sarin. Thank you, Savana. And thank this you. This has become our new mantra in America. Namaste. Oh, yes. Namaste. It's not namaste. It is namaste away. <laughs> namaste away. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank so, you very much for having us, and thank you, everybody, thank you. for letting us chat with you tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you, all participants. Thank you, Savana. Thank you, Dr. Jana. Thank you, Prashanta. Thank Bye -bye. you.